Hello Captains, this is Kent again, and welcome to the Flight Show. So this video is a little bit of a tutorial, and, and I did a review the other day about the lighting system of KATL uh, Atlanta International by um, Imagine Sin. And someone asked me, they, so how I did the video is I started off on an approach and flew into the airport to see what the lighting effects look like. Well, someone asked me, well, how did you set up the plane on the approach? Because I would like to practice approaches, but I don't want to have to just, you know, take off, fly around and land. I just want to practice on takeoffs and landings. And that's totally cool. And there are two, there are two ways really to do it. One is with a, a third-party software, and one is just using the map function in Prepared or Flight Simulator. So I thought I would just show it. I did a video on this before, but I'm going to focus on setting up the approach. So I think I'm going to start with a third-party software. So there's a program that I highly recommend named FS Flight Control, and it looks like this. If you purchase this software, what it has as a function is position, and it allows you to place your aircraft around a given airport. So right now I set up putting in uh, Fort Lauderdale International, so you put in the code, and then it'll, it'll have the runways you want. So you say the runway you want to land, or take off, and then you say you set the settings as to what you want your aircraft to do. So you need to know the performance um, of your aircraft. I'm using the ATR-72, uh, so I'm going to start off at a speed of 150 knots. Uh, my gear will be down, and my flaps are in full position. And your frequencies will already be tuned if you want to fly an ILS approach, so that's totally cool, right? All right, so what you need to do is then hit what kind of final you want to do. Do you want to be 8 miles out? Do you want to be 3 miles out? Do you want to come in from a 45 degree angle, uh, 2 nautical miles from the final? Or, you know, from either direction or at a base leg, base left or base right. So it gives you some varieties. Or you can do the downwind leg so that you can, you know, practice coming in from the downwind onto the base then for the final. Um, but for now, we're just going to do a final. So I'm going to do a three mile. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this off the screen. So when I hit, wait, where'd it go? Okay, got it going. So we're going to go back three miles, right? So, I hit the three nautical mile final, and now the plane is immediately transported to that location. And so, your pause, so you can get, you know, your stuff together, and, uh, one thing, alright, so I'm going to hit, un I'm going to unpause, however, I do not have my flaps in position. So I'm getting them there. I don't know why that happened, but that's okay. We'll just do it. So my flaps are now in position. Seem to have a little bit of a crosswind, so that's all right. I'm just uh, adding some right rudder. I mean, some left rudder to correct for it. Now, as you can see. I've gone too slow, and I've messed up the approach, so I can do this, and I'm right back where I started. So let's try that again. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Um, I actually, in the screen, I restarted the program uh, because it disappeared before we were to do this example, and I had it set for flap zero, and that's why I reset my flaps, no problem. Alright, so now we're coming in. Now, all the landing, all of that is on you. Uh, but what this program allows you to do is very quickly set up an approach at whatever airport you want to practice. A little low, so I'm giving it some extra throttle. And a little bit of turbulence, too. 
Oh, that looks stunning. 100. All right. Get your flare on. 40. 30. 20. 10. All right. Now let's just say, okay, that was a good landing, but can you do it twice? So, I bring my plane to, I don't have to bring it to a stop, but I'm going to bring it to a stop. And then I hit three miles again. Boom. Back where I started. And then, unpause it. And I start off with my initial conditions again. And I can practice this over and over and over again. I can change the time of day, so I'm doing a morning approach, night approach, and definitely got a cross, got a little bit of a crosswind. Um, you can practice at night, you can practice at day, and you know you can really get to know the characteristics of your aircraft so that you can make really good landings every time. And that's kind of one of the things about training to be a pilot. You know, it's not... It's, it's doing the same thing over and over and over again so that it's in your muscle memory, so that you don't have to spend time thinking about what you're going to do. You can just react due to being properly trained. And so you just do it over and over and over again. And this program really... Uh, again, it's called FS Flight Control really uh, helps to make that an easy process of practicing over and over. Particularly approaches, because, you know, if you can't land the plane, there's no point in being a pilot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Alright, so let's see here. I'm just going to put it down. Alright. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Excellent. Now, you might be asking, well, how much is that program? Uh, I think it was like $36, something like that. And you might say to yourself, man, that doesn't fit in my budget, but I'm going to save up for it. What can I do in the meantime? All right, now I'm going to show you what you can do in the meantime. What you need to do is go to... Oh... Let's see, navigation and map. And this is already in your program. So you zoom in to where you are. Notice that this is the airport where you're located. And then here in the green is the ILS uh, cone for your, your localizer and your ILS cone. So what you do is you drag your airplane to where the outer marker is because that's going to be the altitude that you want to begin your approach I uh, mean bring begin your final now there's another thing that you sh need to do you need to bring up the air you have to have chart uh, you need to find the information of the runway that you're going to land because um, now I use myself I use uh, let's see here uh, electronic flight bag because what electronic flight bag is going to allow me to do is check and see what the uh, what is the altitude that I should be when I'm at the localizer at the outer marker and so as it turns out let's see here I'm gonna choose 10 I need to be at 2,500 feet so then what you do is you put in this box 2,500 so that's the altitude you should be at the outer marker again you should know the performance of your aircraft so you need to also put in the airspeed so I'm going to put in 130 knots. Okay, so now when I hit OK, my plane is going to be at that location. Okay, so now we are back in the game, and we are, as you can see, on the approach to Fort Lauderdale uh, on runway 10 left. So it's, it's free, you can do it yourself, it just takes a little bit more effort to place the plane every time you land. So let's just go ahead and finish this approach. Okay, I'm a little high, so bring it down. 
2500. So since you're doing it manually, you're going to have to take a little work at getting it exactly at the point where you would start to descend on your final. I see that I should have moved it back just a little bit more, but this is cool. I can handle this. I can uh, lower my nose to increase my airspeed, and that will uh, give me the benefit of, of coming down on the glide slope. You know, there's a YouTuber, Captain Joe, who is an actual airline pilot that does these explanations of certain procedures. And one interesting one that he did show was, now you're supposed to fly under your glide slope and intercept it. You shouldn't come down on top of it. But there are procedures for coming down on top of your glide slope, assuming you're not too high with respect to your distance uh, to the airport itself. Um, now, I'm not going to even try to explain it because I think I need to watch that video about four more times so I can really remember and understand everything, but there are circumstances where a pilot can come down on the glide slope rather than intercept it from below. Um, but again, it's not recommended practice. Uh, but it, So it was an interesting video to see that you, it, it can be done, but it's, it's not recommended by any stretch of the imagination. But okay, enough of that. Um, it's actually a nice approach. Much less, uh, it's a really nice uh, sunrise as we're approaching Fort Lauderdale. This lighting is like killer. Oh my gosh. And when you think about this, if you want to practice crosswind landings, which is definitely something that you want to practice, um, you can set up your weather so that you have a crosswind, and you can do these approaches over and over so that you can be comfortable with, you know, giving rudder to your aircraft to maintain a uh, steady uh, path to, on your glide slope and uh, on the localizer. I mean, you definitely can put up scenarios that you can practice over and over again to make you a better simmer. And work on your skills for your piloting. Ah, beautiful. The way it came over the runway and seeing that traffic. A lot of people turn off their auto traffic, but I love to see the traffic because it just makes me feel like I'm in a living, breathing world. So I keep mine going. I know some people don't care, but I really do. There we go. A little bit of flare. Gentle touchdown. Okay. And you know, if you're a, a, a YouTuber that likes to, uh, you know, make flight videos, this is a great, you know, way of placing your aircraft to set up a video for an approach or a final or what have you. So, you know, there you have it. Um, you now see you have an opportunity to see how you can place your aircraft on a final to practice your landings. One by a third party software that again that I recommend called FS Flight Control or you know if it's a bit expensive or you need to save up for it before you actually get it then I showed you one manual way of doing it uh, which is placing it on a map and though I don't have the keys uh, I don't have the keys set to add elevation when you're in slew mode but you could do it by raising your altitude in slew mode, then slew your aircraft backwards away from the runway and set up your uh, final there. Those are three different ways. I just didn't do the last one because I didn't have that key to raise the altitude of the aircraft in slew mode. But there you have it. I started off with two ways, but I mentioned a third that you can try as well. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, or I don't know if I'd say it's a tutorial, I guess it is. But I hope it was informative if you want to do a little something to practice your finals, I mean your um, approaches and uh, finals to land. Uh, by the way, I love the detail of Fort Lauderdale. This is probably my favorite FS Dream Team airport 
Um, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with FS Dream Team because I mentioned to them that, hey, wouldn't it be great to do Nashville International? They were like, well, there are a lot of airports, and, you know, we got to be over that. In other words, they were like, we ain't doing your damn airport. So, you know, but, you know, where they do stuff good, they do stuff good. Their new O'Hare Airport, bar none, is a really good airport. But I love Fort Lauderdale. It's just a beautiful uh, rendition airport. Love flying into it. Love seeing it. Well, enough of that. So I appreciate you tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I look forward to seeing you in the virtual skies.